Hi everyone, welcome back. This is the 23rd video in our series on building a chess engine from scratch in the Java programming language. Our focus right now is on the move class and how to execute a move. And I mentioned in the last video that uh, <clears throat> sort of the, the most important part of this move class is the execution of a move. Um, and part of that involves uh, the requirement to implement the hash code and equals for pieces. Uh, you know, we every anytime you want to sort of interact with collections, uh, you need to um, override the hash code and equals method. I'm not going to go into the sort of you know the theory behind that too much. I did bring up one article um, on in my. Uh, sort of my browser that you can look into on that. I'll paste this in the description box. You can look into it uh, if you have sort of questions as to why we need to do this, but I'll sort of assume that you already know why, and I'll just show you how we're going to implement those methods for our particular pieces. Um, right, so let's just jump right into it here. Let's start by the going to the piece class. Um, and let's go ahead and say at override public boolean equals. Right, so we're defining how to compare, do an object equality test between a piece and another object. Final object other. Oops. Uh, and we're also going to have uh, override public boolean. Uh, actually, this is going to be an int int hash code, right? And these methods exist on the object class, and the default implementation for equals, I believe, is um, does reference equality between two. Uh, variables and for hash code it returns the address of the object in memory as an integer. Okay, so let's go ahead and say if this is equal to other. So if they're if they actually refer if they're if they are referentially equal, then by definition they are going to have object equality return true as well. So this is just a shortcut, return true. Um, if uh, the other thing is not an instance of a piece, if the thing that we're comparing against is not a piece, don't bother. Right, these are just shortcuts and Finally, what we can say is final piece, piece, uh, final piece, other piece is equal to piece. Let's cast the other object as a, a piece. Since we've gotten this far, we know it must be a piece because we've got past this check. Um, return piece position is equal to other dot get piece position. Oh, I'm sorry. Other piece dot get piece position and piece type is equal to other piece dot get piece type and Piece alliance is equal to other piece dot get piece alliance and this first move is equal to other piece dot is first move right and this is complaining Let's see, return, oh, I said piece alliance, piece position. Thank you, compiler, for not letting me do that. Okay, 
so that looks about right. And for hash code, we can say int result is equal to piece type dot hash code. Right, piece types in enum, and we can use the enums hash code as the starting point and say result. Again, I'm not going to go through the theory here on this. I, I, I really recommend that you guys look this up and see why I'm using this implementation. Plus piece alliance dot. I'm just, you can actually even have the IDE generate the hash code and equals method for you. I'm just typing it out explicitly. Um, piece alliance dot hash code. Result is equal to 31 times result plus piece position. Result is equal to 31 times piece. I did the type, the alliance, and the position, and now just the um, result is equal to 31 times result plus this first move. Zero. Return result. Now the interesting part about this is that given that our object is immutable, we don't actually have to compute this each time. We can introduce a new member field. We can say private final int cached hash code. And here we can say this dot cache hash code is equal to compute hash code. And then let's introduce that method. We can take the implementation of this, move it here. And for hash code, we can just say return this dot cache hash code. There we go. So I think that's it here. Um, right, so I, I guess if I wanted to just sort of briefly cover what we did, you know, anytime you interact with collections um, of objects, you will need to implement the hash code and equals method. Um, and that's what we've done here uh, to, for, we want to, this, there's different types of equality, right? Um, the most natural way to think of two objects being equal is that all of their all of its constituent pieces are equal right so if you had two people objects and they had the exact same eye color the exact same hair color the exact same names uh, height uh, fingerprint all that stuff then they're equal um, for all intents and purposes but if and that's object equality, right? The constituent pieces, the member fields are all equal. Reference equality is that you are actually pointing to the same object, right? So we didn't new two objects. We actually nude one object and compared the, and, and we are comparing two references to that same object. That would be reference equality. Um, and that's not what we want to test for. The default implementation for object, I think, for equals on object, I believe is reference equality. Yeah, see that? Look at that. We went up to object and we literally are doing reference equality for but for the default implementation. And but what we want to do is we want to override that. We don't want reference equality. Um, we want object equality. And so again, I, I really recommend that you guys read up on this if you aren't familiar with it, but it's an um, important part of our program. Um, and we are actually going to implement our um, hash code and equals for the move class as well. But uh, yeah, so I just wanted to cover this. Uh, and in our next video, we will pick up where we left off and continue with the different types of moves. Uh, but now that we've uh, gotten the hash code and equals method out of the way for the piece class. Thanks, everyone.